The Rise of Nazism. Introduction. The dominant fit political figure of German history in the 20th century, Adolf Hitler, was born in the small Austrian town of Braunau on the 20th of April 1889. In his book Mein Kampf, published in 1924, Hitler suggested that his family was poor and that his boyhood was a time of hardship. In fact, he came from a middle class family that was comfortable by the standards of the day. The young Hitler had ability but performed poorly at school. He reacted against discipline and the conformity of school life. What gave me pleasure I learned, he later wrote. What seemed to me unimportant or was otherwise unattractive to me, I sabotaged completely. One of his teachers described Hitler as willful, arrogant and bad-tempered. He had obvious difficulty in fitting in at school. Moreover, he was lazy. Hitler had a poor relationship with his stern and inflexible father, and when his father died in 1903, Clara Hitler had become very had very little control over her headstrong son, and in 1905, at the age of 15, Hitler left school altogether. Two years later, Hitler applied to enter the Vienna Academy of Arts, but his application was rejected. rejected. By the age of 21, he was almost destitute, and was forced to live at a shelter for homeless men. Occasionally he'd made some money from drawing sketches or painting scenes of old Vienna, but he refused to take, seek a settled job. By 1910 he'd begun to show an interest in politics, and he spent his hours in public libraries reading on a variety of topics that excited his interest and engaged in political discussion and argument in the working men's cafes and coffee houses that he frequent, frequented. In 1913 Hitler left Vienna and moved across the border to Munich capital of the German state of Bavaria. He was living in Munich in 1914 when the First World War broke out and although not a German citizen, he sought permission to join the German army. His request was granted and in August 1914 he became a member of the 16th Bavarian Reserve Infantry Regiment. I was carried away by the enthusiasm, Hitler later wrote. I sank down upon my knees and thanked heaven out of the fullness of my heart for having been permitted to live in such a time. He served in the German army throughout the entire First World War and he was a loyal and conscientious soldier and unlike many other soldiers he never complained about the hardship or conditions and never sought leave. His war ended in 1918 when he was caught in a gas attack and partly blinded. He was taken back to Germany to recover and it was in hospital that he heard the news that Germany had surrendered. Like for so many other brave soldiers, the shock of Germany's defeat had a profound impact on him. He fervently believed in the idea that Germany had been betrayed. Everything went black before my eyes, he later wrote, as I staggered back towards my ward and buried my aching head between my blankets and pillow. During these nights, my hatred increased, a hatred for the originators of this dastardly crime. The German Workers' Party or the Nazi Party. After the war, Hitler was made a political officer for the army. It was his first steady job he'd ever had and one of his duties was to report to the army command in Bavaria on the small political parties that flourished in the state. It was in this capacity that he attended a meeting of a small political group called the German Workers' Party in September 1919. This obscure group had been founded earlier in 1919 by Bavarian toolmaker Anton Drexler. It had a confused political program and only 40 members when Hitler attended one of its meetings in a back room of the Sternbecker Brewery in Munich. On that particular evening, the group was discussing the issue of Bavaria breaking away from the rest of Germany. With his deep, deeply felt sense of nationalism, Hitler was vigorously opposed to the proposal. He was stirred to speak and he made such an impact that a few days later Drexler invited him to join. Hitler was put in charge of publicity and propaganda and from 1919 he devoted all his energies to the party and sought to broaden its base and appeal. In October 1919 he delivered his first speech to a large audience. It was the first time he had succeeded in attracting over 100 people to a meeting and a few months later over 2,000 people crammed into the Hofbräuhaus, House, a Munich beer hall, to hear this new voice. Not long after, the party changed its name to become the National Socialist German Workers' Party, which is, what, which is where the term Nazi comes from. And to give the party a distinct identity, it developed its own set of symbols and emblems, including the swastika, the party colours of black, red and white, and a distinctive party salute. 
The party also attracted increasing financial support and it was able to establish its own newspaper. As the party took shape, it also wished to project itself as a party with a clear purpose or political program. And in February 1920, the party published this 25-point program, a wide-ranging statement of what the Nazis stood for. And by 1923, the Nazi party had over 70,000 members, including 15,000 members of the SA. The SA was a feature of the Nazi party. Another feature of German political life of the 1920s and early 1930s was the activity of military groups that supported different political parties. Most of these groups were made up of men who had military experience in the First World War, and many of them were in the earlier Freikorps formations that had played a role in German political, political life in the early 1920s. The Nazis were supported by the SA. The Nazi party now had its own private army and its membership grew rapidly. With its extreme right-wing views and its opposition to both the Republic and Communism, the Nazi party attracted a growing support from ex Freikorps troops. The SA attracted men of all types, many of them no better than thugs and street bullies. In their distinctive brown uniforms, brought from surplus war stock in Austria, and their swastika armbands, they became ver the very visible face of the Nazi movement. Their aim was to promote the, the party in rallies and parades and above all to protect the party leaders from their political opponents. It was to be the battering ram of the movement. It was, in Hitler's words, not only an instrument for the protection of the movement but also primarily the training school for the coming struggle. Violent street battles between the SA and supporters of other political groups became a feature of political life. In October 1922, the Nazis participated in a German day, arriving by special train over 800 SA members marched through the city of Coburg under the Nazi banner and provoked a major street battle with their opponents. One of the leading figures in the early movement was Captain Ernst Röhm, who joined the party and brought, consider brought considerable army back into the movement. The SA membership grew and by 1923 the movement was under the command of Hermann Göring. Göring reorganised the SA along military lines and brought some order to the organisation.